Hello, hobos. Welcome to the Boho Factory. Today we're here with Stephanie Rond, who is an international known artist, street artist, feminist, and a multi-platform teacher. She also has a TED Talk, if that has anything to say. Real professional here. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie, would you like to hi. say hi? <laughs> How's your day going? Can't complain. Can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah. Okay. Do I have to talk really loud? No, you're fine. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> okay. I just talk loud naturally, so yeah, guys. <laughs> How um, was your day? It was uh, really good. I had a lot more confidence at work, guys. I was so paranoid that I wouldn't get it, but I got it. it was, I work at a coffee shop. And it's like a really bussing coffee shop. Really, and, oh, and then they curate the walls with art. And oh, very each nice. month they have different. It's so nice, guys. So if you're over by Parsons, go check out Upper Cup. Yeah, but anyways, That's a great spot. Yeah, it is so good, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, it's such good coffee. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so you have made a whole entire career slash life out of art. Well, I'm trying to. <laughs> trying. Trying? Yeah. Okay. Go deep dive into that. <laughs> Why is it trying? Not it is. Well, I guess it is, but it's a lot of contract work. So it's a lot of nickeling and diming my way through life, you know? Um, yeah. It's like, I don't have health insurance. I don't know where the money's coming from. From this month, this yep. week, or whatnot. Yep. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, but on the other <sighs> side, it's... What you love to do. Yeah, I'm happy doing it. And mm -hmm. and you can't put money. I mean, as long as you can pay the rent and eat. Yeah. That's what it really is. Shelter on food and water, guys. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm hmm That's what life's about, but you're happy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't complain. Yeah. You do what you love to do, right? Right. That's what life's all about, y'all. Life's all about that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you're Gotta... adorable. <laughs> Uh, um, how's curating for the main library? Oh, that's a, that's a great gig. So I'm actually, I'm the founder of that gallery. So I used okay, to work okay. for the library. Yeah. Um, and then. Just as a librarian or. I, I was called a library assistant. So it was like all of the librarian work without the master's degree. So um, I left the library, and they had this beautiful space that no one was using. Yeah. And so um, we turned it into a gallery. How did you do that? Um, well, because I had already worked there. Yeah. So I went to my then ex-boss and said, I want to, I wanna, like, make this a satellite for other organizations mm -hmm. so that people can come see the work. and. Yeah. It was a lot about accessibility um, because a lot of people don't feel comfortable going into galleries and museums, and I don't blame them, yeah. um, but I wanted it to be a space where people felt comfortable going to see the art, but not only seeing art, but seeing themselves in the artist and in the work that was being produced. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the open to all that's on the front of the building yeah. is very important to me and has always been important to me. Um, that anybody from any walks of life can come in there right. and see art. Yeah. Right. And it's such an important Educate institution yeah. um, in terms of um, education. I, mm -hmm. I, I consider it the people's university. So it's the yeah. place that you can go for free and um, learn about any subject you really any want. Any subject to. you want, yeah. Yeah, so. Is that why in so many pieces of your art there are books? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, because yeah. I think that just makes a well, more well-rounded person. You know, yeah. the more that you can research, um, the more you know, you know? Yeah. So um, everything that I put into my work is has some sort of symbolism. Yeah, a message. Or, yeah, yeah, some sort of idea behind why it's there. So everything mm -hmm. is intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Do you just make anything for the fun of it? Like, or is it just an intention? There's always a message behind it. Um, I would say that it. I've always been a social political artist. So mm -hmm. ever since I was 15, 
um, when I went to Fort Hayes and I started making I was about to mention art. that. Yes. Um, that's when I started protesting. And mm-hmm. it's, so I've always been an activist. Um, so I, I feel like my role as an artist is to make sure that we're having really hard conversations. Yeah. But that we're, we have something to look at as we have those hard conversations. Mm-hmm. You know, something to bounce the idea off, off of. of. Um, so, but, to re- represent yeah. the question? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But um, doing things for fun. I mean, yeah, I do silly little things, so. <laughs> just dumb things. Like, like during yeah. COVID, uh, my partner, he just kept talking to me all through COVID. Uh, he'd work on one side of the table and i work on the other. And so I built like a, a wall <laughs> with a <laughs> hole for the cat to walk between. <laughs> and then I made like little art, you know, for yeah. his side and my side. But just so <laughs> like, you know. So you know, like don't talk to me while yeah. I'm working. You gotta knock on the door if you yeah. wanna talk to me. So um. Was it an actual factual door? It, it was like a, oh, oh, like, like a cat. Yeah, because you set it right on the yeah. table. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I do stupid stuff all yeah. the time. That's good. Freedom of art, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Your su- su- support system since you were 15 years old. I wanted to touch base on this because throughout each, each episode, I've talked about support systems. Okay. So, you've had a really good support system from your parents supporting you if you want to do anything you put your mind to you can do it from what i've read yeah i mean we we certainly had our battles um but i was also a very hard-headed kid so it wasn't that they were like you can do whatever you want Mm -hmm. it was more like i'm gonna do whatever i I want want. yeah yeah um, and they, uh, they're from the hippie generation. So, you know, I learned how to protest from them. them yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of lessons that they, they taught. Have taught you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then going to an artistic school like Fort Hayes, how has that affected your career? Um, Fort Hayes honestly saved my life. N- yeah. No joke. I, um, was in, uh, a parochial school here in town in ninth grade. Um, I had gone from school on Ohio State campus to this Mm -hmm. very bougie, high school. Uppity school, yeah. Yeah. And um, I skipped so much school that day, I got a point nine. Um, So I was never there. Um, And so Fort Hayes opening gave me an opportunity to be with like-minded individuals where I was treated as an equal, equal and not as like you know the the kid having to clean the lunch tables for tuition and yeah you know all that crap that goes with with going to with, school like that yeah, yeah not I mean those kids now that I'm older those kids have their own problems yeah 100%. but they weren't the problems um, I was having, having yeah. you know so yeah. there was no we couldn't there was no way we could relate so yeah that's how I was when I went to my school. What school did you go to? Bishop Hartley. Oh, okay. Yeah. My ninth grade was Watterson, so you oh, understand. Yes. I understand. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I went there for all four years. And I understand with that point nine, because I had a 1.9 one year, and I was like, I'm good with this. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's tough to get an education yeah. when you're being constantly bullied, really. Yeah. You know, so... Fort Hayes. Feeling, okay, I didn't... Feeling, like, othered, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I was an outsider, but I felt like I was faking because I'm a good talker. So, I would just talk to everybody in school, but I had no friends, and I was sleeping 18 hours a day, guys. Not being creative has that effect on you. Mm-hmm. And the only person who really helped me out was Mr. Gallup, my art teacher. That's the there only person. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And I had photography. He let me do whatever I want in that class. And I was like, all right. And I just respected him. Yeah. 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 Because he gave you the outlet. Yeah. The outlet I needed. And I only, we did like, I didn't take one my sophomore year. And that was my worst year. I'm such a positive person now that I'm in the art community in Franklinton. Uh And I was a hateful being. I was spiteful. I wouldn't even recognize myself back then I've been like hurt people hurt yeah exactly yeah and your message in all your artwork is love and peace and wisdom and teaching 
Now it is. Yeah. <laughs> in college, I yeah. was what was considered um, at the time a riot girl. So oh. I was in a, you know, I was very aggressive, very yeah. in people's faces, very. Um, but then I learned that the 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 honey bees say yeah or flies whatever yeah, yeah. catch more flies with honey yes yeah yeah so um, once I started to soften my message I realized that people were coming towards you coming as a light. towards yeah right right like because, most of the light That's exactly because yeah. I was I was pretty much repelling in my twenties yeah. <laughs> So yeah. whoa, <laughs> yeah, she's aggressive. So, yeah. <laughs> Which, but I was. <laughs> well, I mean, we yeah. have to. We ha- there. Have I'm to still be. aggressive now. It's yeah. it's just it's a must. Yeah, but it's a yeah. with a kind heart and not being like if you don't go against you know my if you go against my message then you're not with me and da, 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 yeah. I don't care. Yeah. It's more like let me understand what you're where you're, where coming, you're coming from. from. Mm-hmm. How can I change it without changing you? Kind exactly. Of. Yeah. Or changing you for it's the like better. It's like you know me. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, um. When did you figure out? I know you said after college, kind of in between. When were you like? What was the key moment? That's what I went. What was the key moment where you were like, okay, I need to change my message. I need to not change my message. I need to change how about I produce my message. It honestly goes back to working for the library. Yeah. So um, in college, I started, you know, um, shelving books and then helping yeah. customers yeah. and um, just getting more of an education and, and a life experience yeah. really opened up to how I was presenting my thoughts and messages. Yeah. Just being in that quiet space that had education behind it. Yeah. Well, and librarians are brilliant people. Oh, you know, yeah, I, every librarian is a brilliant person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know, being around um, old, older, more I won't say yeah. older, more experienced citizens. Yeah. More who, experienced. Who, I like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, more wisdom, more maturity. wisdom, yeah, exactly. So, um, it wasn't just books; it was definitely the people in the culture that I was surrounded. In. Yeah, yeah. And then I that also I went to Ohio State, and yeah. um, my mentor was Fioris West, oh. who um is is a isn't a, is she a, a poet? Um, Fioris West is um he was the dean of um the painting department at Ohio State. He has oh. he has passed away. Um, sadly, but he, uh, when I went to Ohio State, I was making feminist work then. I was looking at, like, um, advertisements and how, you know, and also the 50s, like, how everybody was acting like it was so great, but people were being, like, hung from trees and nobody was Yes, talking about it. And so, um, it was very abstract, when I like the the trend was abstract art when yeah. I was there, and so Fioris was also doing representational work of Black women. Okay. Um, and you know I, I would go into these crits and just get massacred in terms of oh you know this isn't a problem this doesn't exist, and he um, just told me to keep going and mm-hmm. he's the one that taught me that you know art is about creating experiences for other people. Yeah. That's that's what it's for. for yeah at least the type that he and i make yeah yeah but i think every type of art has an experience for a different type of person even though it's not your type of personality it might touch another person like no other right it uh every type is even small art like a stop galleries <laughs> <laughs> she's good with the segue <laughs> Different type of... Hold on. What was I saying before that? You got caught me off guard with this. Segways. Um, experiences. S- S- galleries. Oh, every art has a person. So, if you're looking for a piece of art and you look at, like, Leonardo da Vinci or something and it doesn't touch you, there's an art person out there for you. Mm-hmm. Might be your own art. 
always a thing. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, how was it like having a mentor who could see what you were producing in college? Like that feminist movement who could understand it and not being like, it's not a problem. Well, I think it was interesting because he was the only black professor, you know, oh, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the 90s. 90s. So. Props. You know, there's a, there, there were not discussions happening that should have been happening. happening. Um, and it was a big blind eye back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I think that, you know, he, he recognized um, what I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, oppression at that time. It was gender specific. Now, it's. Yeah obviously gotten much bigger Better, yeah um but um you know he was talking about race when no nobody was at OSU about was talking about that didn't have the knockers and well yeah. he was the head of the department I mean he was a Yale graduate so he was he had a big voice he was badass yeah I mean he he sound wait okay <laughs> hold on let's look up a picture of him guys West Tiaris West <laughs> um I'm gonna just pull it up so you can type it out because I'm not gonna know how to spell it yeah. And we could put we could put it in the we're, we're gonna put it in a picture. Okay, yeah. okay, fantastic. Cause yeah. I think everyone should, should know, know about him. Yes. Yeah. I feel like if I see a picture of him, I'll know who he is. Cause he's probably a staple at OSU, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean he's that's Fioris. Oh yeah. Yeah. And oh my gosh, just... he was smiling till the Yes. He was a wonderful man. You recognize him? I, no, I don't. <laughs> That's all no, right. Kidding. There's two million people in this city. Yeah. So, so Wait, funny. there's two million people in this city? Almost, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of people, Did you know right? That? No, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> it's a big city. Yeah. That no one knows about. Columbus yeah. where? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what? <laughs> that everybody goes through every... I think I've seen this before. The painting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can see his work is it's just... magnificent. Oh, God, it's just gorgeous. Oh, my God. So, oh, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Fair. I was about to say, this is beautiful. I believe there's going to be a retrospect of his work at Ohio State um, coming up next year. Oh, wow. I know, right? 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 Yeah. Yeah, huh. so... Um, right that's place, sick, right time. right? Right place, wow. right time for... The most Brilliant. wonderful men. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah. Do you see the lips in the background? Yeah, I saw that. Oh that my beautiful. gosh, that's <sighs> beautiful, lady. Ugh. Beautiful piece. I know. Ah, it's <laughs> different. There's gonna be um, like a retrospective of his work. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where at Ohio State is. It's white. probably gonna be in the library. I don't know. You don't know. Um, it might be at the alumni, um, Orton Good. Hall. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know how OSU is set up, guys. So. <laughs> it's one big bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah, I'm say it's one. Bloop. No, it's but I center. really loved Ohio State. I loved yeah. going there. I mean, I grew up on campus, so I... I it wasn't a big change. It was like home. Yeah. yeah, it was not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but I can see how it is for some people, but... I... I rarely... I've gone to that park maybe a handful of times. It's just so weird. But... Things keep escaping my brain. <laughs> uh, man, do you? Okay, so my mom went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my mom went to to go get her arts degree and stuff, and now she regrets it because I don't know why. And everybody always says English degree you'll regret. Communications and then art. I disagree completely. You disagree? Why? Because um, having an art degree means that you are very good at problem solving. It mm. means that you can see a problem and see 15, 20 different solutions rather than one. Whenever people are going through a hard time, I'll always say look smaller because you'll see the beauty within the world. Everything you walk across is a piece of art, really. Essentially. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Even how buildings are made to pieces of grass. And you said... Oh, man, let me remember the quote. Mm, that everybody needs to experience beauty. Something along the lines of that. 
Um, early in the conversation? No, like, uh, in your life. Oh. Uh, I don't remember that quote. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's true. Yeah. We'll just cut that little piece out. It's okay. <laughs> but, um... Uh, even when you were walking around with a dollhouse full of art. <laughs> yeah. In New York City, guys. She did this, actually. Yep. You wanted people to look smaller and still see the beauty in it. In the art. Even right. though it was a miniature, you know, little itsy bitsies. Right. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that pe all people need to experience art? Well, I mean... First of all, you're right. We can't help it. It's everywhere. I yeah. mean, it's this beautiful wall and this burn with the TV. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, the, it's the, everything. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, but I think for me and in, in the work that I'm making, I'm really focused on um, environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, space and place um, and, and what the, that means to us living as individuals in those spaces and places. Cause who owns outside another quote of ours. Exactly. Who, yes. it, yeah, because, um, you know, we're, we're constantly having advertisements thrown at us, you know, follow yeah. this, buy this. Um, and, and that can be, that's eye, eye violence, you know? Yeah. So, so it's much better to see work that can inspire you right yeah than to inspire you to buy a product yeah so. um this is a good segue again is that why you post so many women in your thing in your uh street art reading being uh statues being memorialized through your own artwork well the statues is are new so yes. that's a new body of work um yes. but yeah so the character is called ghost girl so that's yeah. the character i've been working with for the last 10 years it's yeah. all uh real women real girls but yes it did start be to combat the objectification of women and girls in advertising yeah. Um, and to show them doing activities rather than, you know, here's my pretty face. Yeah. Um, this is all I'm good for. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and so I, I named her Ghost Girl for a couple reasons. Um, because I want her to represent the ghost of the good of all of us. Like the ghost yeah. of our humanity. Um, and then it That's also beautiful. represents um, every time I do something with a, a model it's really a collaboration between me and them so yeah. so that representation that's left over is kind of the the ghost of our relationship basically yeah. the connection kind mm -hmm. of yes that's beautiful oh shit <laughs> stop <laughs> how do you pick your colors because i've seen a sim simil similarity Throughout your artwork of this kind of bluish teal esque, purple, and then of course it's that's the same color but brighter, and the grays and the blacks. Yeah, so when I started putting work um, outdoors, so when I started doing street art, yeah, um, back I, in 2011, guys. I, um, <laughs> man, you're good. <laughs> At least that's when I came out. I was doing yeah. it before then, but uh, I came out as a uh, woman. Officially. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was making them all blue um, so that we could have conversations about how we assign um, gender roles in utero. Oh. So I really wanted to have conversations about, you know, like the color blue yeah. and the color pink. Yeah. And, um, and why do we pick blue for males and then females get pink? Right. And, and why... And why do we start to think that, you know, if you're a male child, then you're going to be this way. And if you're a female, female you're going to be this yeah. way. Um, and thankfully, it is becoming more fluid, which I'm really happy yeah. about. It um, took a good old long time. It took a long time. time. But the blue also, there's nothing really in nature besides, like, water. Yeah. Um, that's in the sky that but like if you think about like reflection of yeah, water yeah if yeah. you think about like um 
just us walking around yeah. in our everyday environment, there isn't a lot of blue outside. So that blue really pops in the outdoor environment. Oh, so it makes smart. it really noticeable. Yeah. Um, and then I also go into the schools a lot. So when I work with younger students, mm -hmm. then I can start that conversation of, of um, assigning, you know, Colors ways of being yeah yeah, yeah. Gender, I mean. so yeah. yeah um but i've just started this new series where i for so long didn't want to put them on pedestals but now i'm super into um anti-monumentalism and so their color palette's changing because yeah. i want them to look more like more stone yeah. yeah yeah so like a tan one or yeah. something like that and you know? i was bored with blue I'm not gonna yeah. lie but i was like this only is so many blues you can do <laughs> right <laughs> i can only do this for so long, long. so yeah so I, I needed to challenge myself too yeah. so it was the right time it was the right time mm -hmm. when was it what I know you started the pedestal anti, what did you say? Anti. Uh, Monumentalism. Monument, I know. I was about to say anti murals and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> anti -mon monumentalism. That's a mouthful. Um, uh, back in 2022? Um, I really started. I mean, it's. It takes me a long time with ideas, so it takes me about two years to really think of process mm -hmm. what I think about this this yeah. to begin with. This core subject. Yes, yes. yes. But then, um, yeah, probably about 2020 is when yeah. I really started to be like, okay, this is like where I want my work to go. This is the discussion mm -hmm. I want to have. So, What was your thought process behind it? Like, I know you said it took two years... Could you list out how you made this decision for these future artists? So I um, started studying um, just monuments in history first mm -hmm. um, because I was very invigorated by the monuments coming down. Um, specifically, invigorated? Yeah, like, yes, yes, they need to come down. <laughs> yes, yes. racist old white men, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please, let's get rid of it. Yes. I mean, not erase the history. Like, I, I believe... Yeah, keep them in books. Yeah. <laughs> but also, let's not lie in these books and say right. there were wonderful people when they had slaves and were lynching people. Yeah, okay? they were terrible people. Yeah. So... They shouldn't be in set in stone. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. No. Well, there's something about monuments that are just... Um, Weird. Yeah. 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 And just so, like, white man. Yeah. So... It's, Ooh. Do you mind if I interrupt here? No. <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of, I know this is taking it to religion. I don't know where you think about this. But the golden cattle, like how people worship, on a pedestal is like where you worship a person. That's where your altar is. Even if you believe in whatever you believe, I know you don't believe and worship. Hopefully you don't. Hopefully you don't. A human. <laughs> Because they're just like you and me. Right. They shouldn't be set in stone. No. And, and there's something very um, vulgar about yeah. taking up space that people, contemporary people live in. Yeah. Um, with these representations, which are all male. <laughs> so yeah. that was the, the, another reason why I wanted to put... They are all male. Yeah. There's it's all rare to find an ethnic uh, monument. In fact, there's only one female monument in all of Columbus. So two one million people. Fe mm. female monument in all of Columbus. Yeah. So even the um, the statues that are on the, in front of the state house. Yeah. Where they have like the men, and these are you know these men. These and are the, women. Yeah. Those women were models, but they were never given their credit for being being a, model? Being a person, basically. So. So. They said another pretty face, guys. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you're breaking that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm interested in um, creating spaces where monuments are about emotions. Yeah. Rather than specific people. Yeah. Or like about like perseverance of us as a community. Like one of them is Lady Justice. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they have all different types of meanings. meanings and, yeah. um, this one in particular, this, I brought this one because this was the first ghost girl I ever did yeah. 10 years ago. 
So Good. this is my niece. She was four, but Trayvon Martin had been murdered. And so yeah. I started putting her in hoodies and everything because it also helped to have that discussion about... Um, why are hoodies? What, what, why is this person who's, you know, wearing this thing that I have on yeah. now? And it's also um, gender fluid, right? Yeah. It's an object that we all wear. wear yeah. So, um, yeah, so that one, I, that has been reiterated over, over and, and over and over, and over again. again. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> no, it was beautiful. I never really thought about Trayvon Martin when I saw this. I was like, I didn't even tell it was a girl. A girl, right. That's why it's gender fluid, guys. Right. <laughs> it was just immortalized. And I see these two, I'm assuming parents or... Or is They're it like her? the twins. Yeah, yeah. It's twins. Like yeah. her future selves, maybe. Maybe, like, you know, yeah. Maybe looking back on her. Um, her, the inner child kind of like thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it makes me question your art even more, which is the reason that's of your good. art. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the meaning. Yeah. Well, and that's, I, I think with this new work, I'm trying to be more playful and mm -hmm. open it up to more interpretation. Yeah. Like getting a little bit more like not, I used to be very like, I still am. Very type A, like everything yeah. has passive. To, but now I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm a Gemini. Yeah. I can loosen this up, right? <laughs> I can so, be a little bit two faced. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, I I have been working with a lot of poets um mm -hmm. over the years, and I used to I've be seen in, that. Yeah. I've I used to be in a punk rock band, so I wrote all my own lyrics. Oh, so I started incorporating my lyrics into, into your work. Into the work, yeah. How? Does that make you feel? Oh, I love it. It's like the first thing I start with is like yeah. this big, um, I'm not religious. I don't know what another word for prayer is. Meditation. It's like it's like when you look at a blank canvas and you just write the words. Words it's, down. And, you, and write over them. Um, Manifestation. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, in a way it's almost like wishing well of the peace. Before Wishing anything well else, the piece. Yeah, yeah. Before anything else happens. happens, and then it's already like started. So yeah. just keep going. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> You're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> pink hair and all, guys. Natural. Uh, it's natural. Natural. Natural pink, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I could never tell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Hundred percent natural. Yeah. Yeah. My mom is a, is a mermaid, so. Yeah. Or Makes My sense. Little Pony, maybe? This is more, like, this is more like My, my little, little Pony. pony. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it, maybe a mermaid having pink hair. You know, coral, maybe. Coral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> um, you're pure at heart, and I love that. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that's very nice. No problem. But it seems like, I'm saying she's pure of heart because her lyrics, her manifestations, the words she writes on these empty canvases are wishing well on others and herself, kind of. It's giving confidence for others to be them, their true selves. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. How are I you... I, I can't say how are you indulging in that message walking through your own life. Not through your art, just, you know. But she's just kind, guys. All her artwork says what she is. She's a kind human being and so welcoming. Until and, you make me mad. Yeah, until Gemini, <laughs> then, guys. Well, Irish temper, guys. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Who's Irish? Mom, dad? Or both. Both. I'm second generation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew you were Irish, but then I was like, I kind of glazed over that. Did your parents move here from Ireland? No. So my parents were born here. Yes. Um, but all my grandparents were, were. born. Yeah. So my grandmother actually, um, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there were um, a whole bunch of children that were brought from Ireland on the trains. Um and were basically turned into indentured servants. Oh, yeah. So my grandmother was one of, um, 
she was brought here at two, and then um, she was raised. Yes, yeah, she, she raised, was raised. She no, she raised. So they had her to basically adopted her so she could become their nanny and like take care of their other children. So. <sighs> That's that's mm. that's that history. Yeah. Well, and the Irish have a very um, big history of protest, obviously. Yeah. So, 100%, yeah. so it's kind of in my blood. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's in my DNA. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. That and the trauma, right? Yeah. I have a lot of trauma in my blood too. So. Yes. Yes. Do you want to indulge in that? How do you get through it on the daily basis? Through, Just, through my art making, yeah. honestly. So you know, there's there's like the heritage trauma but yeah. my own trauma is um so I was sexually uh abused for two years when I was a child yeah um and that was at a time when um that was the 70s so it was like you didn't you didn't you didn't talk about it you, you didn't, didn't talk it. about yeah. that um, Ooh, skeleton is in the closet yeah so that was pretty rough um and um my father was a pretty violent alcoholic mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, art making was a place where I could record that I existed, <laughs> that it, like I was here and that yeah. I had feelings. And, yeah. um, so I think that's just always been who I am. Yeah. So when people are like, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? You know, unfortunately it does come from a lot of trauma. Yeah. Um, but, but I want to make, do what I can to make sure that other people aren't feeling like they're going through their trauma alone. Yeah, not That's, alone, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't uh, I can't help, I can't, like, make sure no one goes through trauma, but yeah. I can be there as, like, a... A support. A, as a soul that's also... Going like, through Going it. through it, yeah. yeah. So, in multiple of our videos that we've done, art has been a release for your trauma. <laughs> How do you conduct it so you're not hateful so you're not despising your own existence and turning into a positive experience for you yeah that's, and a, for others. that's a good question and i think that's a and that that's like a how do you deal with your depression you yeah. know how do you deal with your anxiety yeah. um it's just a lot of practice. I yeah. mean, I can't say that I don't have my bad days, days where yeah. I'm pissed at everybody. And um, I think it's practice. Practice. You know? Practice makes you better. <laughs> Higher tolerance is practice. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I don't know. That's a true answer, though. Yeah. And I think it's probably different for everybody. Yeah. You know? But practice at anything will make you better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier about, um, you know, you attract what you put you out put into out. the world. Yeah. So, you know, you attract, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're, you know, a vibrant, person. beautiful person it's like, like you. yourself, then, you know, people want to hang out with you. Yeah. And, and there's beauty and, and connection in that, do you know? Yeah, I know. I understand that. Because that's how the world works, guys. If you're a positive person and be able to change horribleness into the best jelly you've ever had, then, you know what I mean? You're the best person out there. At least you, you try. Yeah, at least try. Right? I Don't mean, give none up. of us are the best people, people ever. I mean, that's, that's... The best person you can be. You go out through a daily basis where, like, I'm the best me I can be. Right. I don't care. I'm not going to try to be the best Ty because I'm not Ty. I'm not going to be the best Stephanie because I'm not Stephanie. Right. I'm going to be Trinity. The best me I can be on today. No matter if on, it's a bad And day. I think that's important, yeah. the on today part, because you have to, you know, each day is, is, different. is different, too. Yeah. And so, and I think we're, like, super hard on ourselves when we're not hard on others. So, like... Be easy on yourself. Yeah. I mean, don't don't be like get away with everything. Yeah. But but hold yourself but, accountable. But yeah. understand you have to forgive yourself as well. That, perfect. Yeah. That's it. Thank That's you. it. You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we kind of flip flop. So let's go back. Artwork. Okay, so I want to talk about the S dot deck galleries. Okay, now 
I have a key moment <laughs> that I want to pull out because when I saw this, it was in, oh, what was the short film? It was escaping my brain. What was the short Tiny film? Out Loud. Tiny Out Loud. Yeah. Sorry. I knew that name. I just, I didn't want to mess it up. I knew it had Tiny in it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, short, short little piece of artwork, Tiny. Yeah? That's what I linked in my head. But I have this, and it, it seemed like a key moment to me. Because the way you smiled in it, I was like, oh, this is when she knew that ah. she was doing some sh Yeah. Okay. Okay. This will be exciting. Yes. If, if, ah, here it is. It was the second one. <laughs> oh, All right. okay. Hold on. Phone, please let me. Oh, here it is. Turn over. <laughs> That's so interesting that you chose that scene. Why? Because, okay, so in New York, it's, um, their, their filming permits are very different than any other city. Basically, yeah. anyone can film in that city without yeah. permits. Oh, um, except yeah. for certain places, yeah. like the subway. <laughs> Um, ah! So I was absolutely, because we had already been followed twice by the cops um, to other filming shoots. <laughs> and so I was absolutely terrified and, and the film, um, the filmmaker was like, I need the, like, this, this is, shot. This is I have shot. to have this shot. And you can't deny somebody else their art. And so I'm like, oh my God. Oh, I, I just started. Oh my God. <laughs> recognized that that was this oh. face right here this was the nerves and then the smile of i got away with it hold on that's totally you see her it. face yeah. yeah yeah and then hold on look at the other one <laughs> yeah that was like terrified too oh my god we got it and didn't, yeah. didn't get in trouble and didn't get in trouble <laughs> didn't get arrested guys yeah yeah so oh. that's funny yeah. Thank you for noticing that. You're welcome. Because it was like, it zoomed in on it. Uh, hold on. I took a picture of that too. I was just going through and then being like, this is cool. This is cool. Oh! Okay. Okay. It zoomed in. It was like uh, the gallery or whatnot. And it was a little small sign. And then zoomed out. And then she looked kind of nervous. And then she smiled. And I was like, that was that bitch right there. Yep. Tell me about this. Oh, okay. That is, um, oh shoot. I was not expecting that one. This was a painting. That mi a painting? Yeah, no. or a picture? No, that is an installation at the Wexner Center. Oh. So, um, that is Anne. You see the depth? That's Anne Hamilton. So Anne Hamilton, yes. Yeah, so she's a teach, she's a professor. Sh professor, local artist in your community. Columbus based. Columbus based, yes. We don't use local. Local? Why? Because That's... we are more than local. We are based in Columbus. Okay, so are, Columbus based. Yeah, yeah. So you're uh, you're Columbus based. Space. You're Columbus based. Oh, that is like the bougie way of saying local. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're but it's also like... Like professional. It's, it's like... It's more... We own, are here. Owning, you know, that you work outside of... Yeah. Out of Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. Or and if you don't, you will someday. So... Yeah. So... Say Columbus it. Columbus based. Say yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, why did that make you feel something? So, that... Um, that sculpture, the Wexner Center, had just been built, and I was in high school, and uh, my other mentor, Teresa Weidenbush, she took us to that exhibit, um, and that was the first time I had seen a woman artist in person that was, like, in Col from Columbus. Columbus? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it was just like, oh, I affirmed I can do, I can this. do this. I can do this, yeah. So, it um, and it's, gonna be. that whole piece has moths. All, like in the background, those what? are all moth. Um, are moth like are they called chrysalis or is that just butterflies? You know when they cocoon. cocoon. Moth is a it's, cocoon. Yeah, it's a cocoon. Still. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They're all. Yeah, they're all cocoons, and then they all um, through the all exhibit. that brown. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get so many? Uh, how did she get so many? I, yeah. I have no idea, but then as the she exhibit... She was collecting, collecting. <laughs> as the exhibit went on, they, they hatched, right? And so they were... So she built, like, this room, and Wait, then, wait, pause! Yeah! 
Yeah. They were alive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they hatched as the exhibit went on. So, so, I, and that goes back to like anti-monumentalism, right? Yeah. Like this permanence, impermanence thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. they lost her show and blew. Right. She must have knew somebody who knew someone who somehow had a moth farm. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can think it, it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way, guys. <laughs> if you can think it, yep. Yeah. It can it be done. <laughs> is into the anti -mon monumentalism. That word is giving me so much trouble. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> A little bit of tongue twister, guys. <laughs> Say it ten times fast. I'm anti-scholar, I promise. <laughs> what is your keystone moment in your life? Like, where were you like, this was so crazy. I never thought I could do this. Huh. That's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> I know. It's like, at least uh, three things popped into your head. It, or unless you don't like being put on the spot. No, that, I don't mind that. I just don't know. I mean, maybe every day. I mean, honestly, like. What did you learn today then? What did I learn today? Yeah. Today, let's see, what did I do today? That's a great question too. What am I studying right now? Gosh. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of dark, though. No, um, I've been studying uh, dementia lately. Oh, okay. Because I'm really curious about... How, why the brain just, you know, throws stuff out the window? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, you know, having some more experienced citizens in my life, I, yeah. and um, it's starting to run in my family. I just... Uh, Wanted to see... Yeah, I wanted to know what I should be looking for. for the and, warning signs kind of thing? Yeah. Or like, okay, how does the, the brain... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm reading a fiction book that uh, one of the characters has it. Yeah. And so I'm kind of reading this book about how this family is... Going through going it. Going through yeah, it. Taking care yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Handling, I should say. Not taking care of handling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess that's what I've learned recently. Have you learned about dementia? Though it, you said it runs in your family and stuff, but how does your brain, is it your brain literally deteriorating? Or is it more like the connections are getting lost? I think it can be a bunch of things. I mean, yeah. I'm not a doctor. So oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I just play yeah. one on TV. <laughs> no. I, yeah. I am. Um, I, I think I'm, I've been learning more about other people's experiences, experiences with there. it rather than the yeah how do people handle it from your research differently different right i mean it's just like everything it's else personal, Every, yeah. yeah everybody's gonna handle it differently so yeah. i know i don't want it i don't want it either <laughs> uh but that's well, really macabre that's really like down that's like yeah it i down, learned down about rainbows <laughs> What'd you learn today? I'm curious. Hmm. It's a you know, it's funny. Um, I started watching um, that, um, that Dahmer uh, Doc, series, uh, series yeah. Um, and I watched the movie that had Ross Lynch on it yeah. a couple of like, years back. Yeah. Um, and it, and it kind of showed me how service level they really touched on it in that movie and how, much, how way more detailed they got into like his upbringing and how like um, you can you could tell that he has a mental disability mm. and like mm. them showing it in like the film about his um, uh, his mother having a uh, postpartum yeah and that's why she was like that for most of her life oh. yeah. um, and they just didn't know that existed back back then, then. right and it right. revealed to me even more like so they didn't even know this. Then they wouldn't have they known that. A single thing about this guy. Yeah. Right. You know? Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably what I learned so far today. I've probably been like episode four or five so far. Yeah. Okay. Not watched any of those episodes, but from. <sighs> you went to OSU, you, 
Yeah. Whoa, no way. He was here for a while, right? What? Some of I'm his so victims are. Guys. Here? Mm-hmm. I bet, yeah. I'm pretty sure the first one was. Here? Was it? Oh, okay. probably. Because he grew, he grew up in Ohio. I don't know. Right, I don't, I don't know where. No. Ohio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Serial killers, born and raised, Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn today? Wait, I have more questions, but I'll get back okay. to that point. Um, <laughs> so he, he was a psychopath, right? Essentially. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Back then, they didn't know anything. Like, post-traumatic stress disorder, right. disorder, they didn't know anything about that. And then when people just cracked after coming home from the war... It was just like, oh, he's just crazy. Da, 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 da. We have no idea. There were so many things back in the in the non gender roles and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and then not talking about things. But what I learned today <laughs> was, uh, this is the thing. <sighs> Waking up. And feeling bad doesn't mean you're going to have a bad day. Yeah. Because I woke up and I really didn't want to get out of bed, guys. Only got not even two hours of sleep tonight. Yeah. And I was like, I'll be at work at 7 a.m. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. Boo. And had all these people. (laughs) Went into work. Said hello. I was trying to be, you know, polite and stuff. My Lyft driver was going really slow. But he was an experienced man. (laughs) So I was like, oh, I can't be like, hurry up, I'm going to be late for work. But then, <laughs> so I just, I wasn't late, but I was just like slightly irritated, went in, said hello to this, the girl who works with me. She, I don't know if she likes me or not, so. But, and then I just said hello, was being real joyful. She said she was just tired, and I was like, every day I'm going to ask you, and if I don't hear anything back besides tired, I'm going to keep asking you the next day. <laughs> uh, did you say that to her? Yeah, I did. Good. And then she's like, and I was like, I'm going to wait until the day you're like, I'm great. Blah, blah, blah. And then she's she like, you got to find some joy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Instead of just being tired every day, because that's, if you wake up tired, you don't need to be tired. It's about a state of mind. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she, and she's like, um, if I say that, then ask me if anything's wrong. And I was like, I'm just asking you what drugs you're using and how can I get some? <laughs> it was a great little, you know, jazz to the morning. Got me on my feet. So and you here know, you are still working 12 yes, hours later. 12 hours later, guys. 13 guy. hours later. Yeah. It's okay, though. I had a lot of coffee. <laughs> and I had a nap. So. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. But anyways, uh, Stefano. Yeah. Do you want to say what anything to the, <laughs> to the boa hoes <laughs> over here or AK hobos? Um, th- thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> you, want, you want to promote yourself? Oh, promote She does myself. murals, guys. <laughs> you need a mural. It's really nice. <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram. Ooh, yes. Follow her on Instagram at... Stephanie Rond. Stephanie Rond. R-O-N-D. And- R O N D, and then we'll also put in the link below. Are you a singer? Are you a singer too? I sing through life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do that at work a lot too. <laughs> I sing like you're you're a Renaissance things. lady, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for noticing. She is as well, craftswoman at heart. Mm-hmm. Mast well. I feel like you're a master artist, unless you don't like that term. Mm-mm, not really. Always learning and teaching people what she's <laughs> not learned. Not really. Yeah. I feel like every artist I come across doesn't like the master artist thing, but everybody calls them that because they're so good. But they're not really masters of the craft because they still do it. I think they're all master learners. Master learner. Ooh, hey. I like A1 that. A1 master learner right here, Stephanie Ron.